welcome to Geek Church. I am Jared, and today we are gonna get wordy. Alright, so for today's random scripture, we're doing an old school Bible style. Let's go, um, Isaiah 30, wait, 29, 30? Yeah, Isaiah 30, verse 18. Uh, it's right under a subheading that says, The Lord will be gracious. And the verse says, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and he therefore... Let's start that over. Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed all those who wait for him. Alright, let's just go with today's scripture. First one, right off the bat, don't even need to skip. We'll see how I do with this. Okay, so first off, let's just break it down. Uh, therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you. I I'm not 100% sure what that means. So let's skip to the next part. Therefore, he exalts himself to show mercy to you. Um, it's really actually the second part. The first part I'm going to just call ignorance on. Uh, I will come back to after I read the little thing on the bottom. Let's hit the second part because that's what really stood out to me when I read through this. The Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for for him. So here's how I'm going to tackle this specifically. What was I going to say? Oh, that's right. So a lot of times we call out to God and then something doesn't happen right away. And then we're like, oh, well, God doesn't answer prayers or God doesn't care about this or, okay, well, he doesn't want me to have that promotion because I didn't get it right away or whatever it is. And then we stop and we're just like, we stop praying for it. And we don't have patience. We don't have the, the perseverance. So here's the thing. When you play a video game, you don't like die once and go, oh, okay, I'm going to try this one more time. And then like die a second time and go, well, forget it. Then I just, the developers didn't even, didn't even want me to beat this game. They would have made it so hard. And you just throw the game in the pile after playing like 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. No, like you keep playing. And if you die on a certain spot, you come back and you try it again. And if you keep dying, you figure out what's going on. Maybe you take a break and you come back. And then maybe you look up like a walkthrough online to see like, what? how do I beat this part? I do that all the time. I look up walkthroughs, like I stop playing, I pull up my cell phone, I look at a walkthrough. If it's like an actual boss that's hard to beat, because he's just like really strong and you get just kind of frustrated. So like take a break, go eat lunch, go to bed, come back the next day and beat it, right? We, we keep going, we persevere because we have this idea, we have this end goal, we want to beat the game. When it comes to our spiritual life, we need to do the same thing. If there's something God's put on our heart and that we're praying for, or we have a need and we're praying for, praying for salvation of a loved one or a friend or a family member, we're praying for a financial need, we're praying for a healing, we're praying for a promotion, whatever it is, an opportunity, we don't treat it like a video game. Um, I, well, do treat it. I kind of mash those two sentences together. So do treat it like a video game. And keep going. And if you have a setback and you pray for a day and you pray for two days or you pray for three days or you pray for, you know, and God just doesn't seem to answer your prayer, keep going. So talk about he's a God of justice and he blesses those who wait for him. The Bible gives, I can think of two different, well, like two or three different, I'm going to give some scripture examples. I always like to use other scripture to back up. The scripture I'm talking about, just in case, you know, I don't want to mess things up, right? So use scripture to teach scripture. It's a good idea. So there's a story of the unjust ruler or the unjust judge and the widow, right? And she keeps coming to him and he finally breaks down and gives her justice and says, not because I fear God, not because I fear man, but because you are going to drive me crazy. And in that story, Jesus is using it as an example of how we're supposed to uh, petition God. And it's like literally like keep coming to him, keep coming to him. We see here. He's God of justice. You're, you'll get your justice. And he blesses those who are patient. Make sure I have the wording right. Uh, blesses all those, um, all, bl blessed are all those who wait for him. So if you wait for him, God's timing is not the same as our timing. Like we want everything done like that, right? We want, we all think of like the original Mario where we, as soon as we get in trouble, we want like a big mushroom or a fire mushroom and then boom, just blast through our enemies, right? It's not always that way. Sometimes it's, like, it just takes time and we have to keep going and keep developing. And the thing is, when part of that is it causes us to grow. One, grow in character, but also to grow closer to God. Because instead of just saying, oh, hey, my magic genie God, um, take care of this problem. Poof, it's gone. Like, it causes us to keep coming back to him. It causes us 
to read scripture, see what's going on, causes us to um, look at ourselves. These are actually all things that we can do if, if we're not getting our answer. Um, examine our, our lives for sin and repent of sin. Um, look for maybe maybe I'm, I'm going the wrong way and I'm praying that God will like move this situation, but really he wants to use this situation to change me and then kind of go around it and then I'll grow to a new level. Oh yeah, I've been praying this year that God will grow me and grow my character and maybe this is the answer to that prayer. And so that's why, so there's all these different things, right? But the point is, just like a video game, you have to keep trying. And when you feel like you've been knocked down, you have to do it again. When you feel like you did it wrong, you just have to do it again until you get to the very end. Or in this case, you get the answer to prayer. The other one that came to mind, and there's another one of the friend, you know, knocking on the door and his, you know, his friend gets up, not because of friendship. Um, that one too, it's very similar to the judge story. But the other one it made me think of is when Daniel is praying, and he's not getting the answer to prayer, and he ends up fasting and praying for, I think, 28 days. And finally, an angel shows up and gives him the answer from God. He says, look, the very first day that you prayed for an answer, like, God sent me to come here. But there was a demonic force, a demonic um, ruler over this land that tried to stop me, and I had to fight him. And it was Daniel's praying that um, allowed him to keep fighting and eventually win and break through that barrier and that demonic force and bring him the message and I, I don't remember if it says it specifically but i think the insinuation is that if he'd given up it would have never happened he would have um he wouldn't have the angel wouldn't be able to get through to get to get the message so yeah um also if if that kind of piqued your interest a little bit about angels and demons and whatnot um i'll post a little link somewhere on the screen to a uh, Doom Bible study I did about um, hell and demons and a little bit of spiritual warfare. So go ahead and you know check that out. I'll put the link in the description as well. Go check that out. Uh, I did a three dollar review um, on the game of Doom, and then I have a Doom Bible study with that. So go check both those out. Uh, they're, they're both put a lot of time into them, and I like them. So go watch them. Okay, so now let's jump to part two. Let me read the little bottom part of the Bible and see what it says, and I'll come right back to you. Alright, so if I look down, I got little notes on my Bible for 18. It says, God upholds his kingdom in his patience, which you know, isn't giving me a whole lot, but then it says 121 note. So I jump over to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21, the, uh, and then there's a note down here that goes into a lot more detail. But first, let's read the verse. So it's under the subheading, the unfaithful city. And verse 21 says, how the unfaithful, how the faithful city has become a whore. She who has, uh, she, sorry, who was full of justice, righteousness, lodged in her, but now murders, murderers, murderers, like plural, not murders, like active, like an adjective, but murderers as in like a noun. So let's drop down to the actual uh, note, uh, 121, faithful. God is demonstrated by perseverance, stability, and consistency in doing God's will, through the purifying process, so I talked about that of being diligent, and, and so purifying is another thing. It purifies us because as we come, we examine, we see, you know, we realign with God's will. We examine ourselves for sin and, and repent, all that kind of stuff. So you know, I'm, I'm sounds like I'm in the ballpark. Uh, purifying process, the Lord will renew a remnant who will again constitute a faithful city, and then it gives verse 26 because He is faithful. And it gives uh, chapter. A reference for uh, 49 7 and 55 3 those all would also be in Isaiah you can look those up and then it goes into okay whore a whore in religion is in I don't I hope this doesn't get me a, um, uh, a profanity rating on, <laughs> on YouTube a whore in religion is an idolater someone who has forsaken God to serve idols and it gives some references Jeremiah 2 20 and 3 1 Hosea 2 uh, so it'd be chapter two, verse two, and then chapter three, verse one. Ezekiel sixteen twenty three. So chapter sixteen, verses twenty three through thirty, actually. And then it says the sins listed, and it gives uh, verse twenty one through twenty three, are all evidence that would be coming down here, just right below that twenty one. It gives the sins listed, are all evidence that God's people had forsaken Him. So they had turned away from God. It says justice, righteousness. 
Justice means right relations between people is violated by murder, rebellion, stealing, and bribery. And then it gives verse 21 through 23 as an example. True justice will defend the cause of orphans and widows as much as the cause of those who can pay bribes and give rewards. The Bible talks a lot about how um, God is a God of right scales, how he hates unjust scales. Uh, the enemies of justice may even pass laws that facilitate their wrongdoing. Uh, verse 10, 1. Despite all such obstacles, God promises to restore righteousness to the earth. And it gives verses 23, uh, 32, 1, 33, 5, 6, 42, Oh no, five, 33, 5, and 6, sorry, and then 42, 1 through 4. Again, these are all scripture references you can look up that goes into examples of what this is saying. Okay, and then it drops down to the other one. So that's all for 128. So we can see, which it was very common with Wordy, is um, the examples give a much more broad, like dealing with God and like the church or this, you know, God and is talking about city, but you know, um, his people. And then I feel like what I said is, is pretty on there. Mine just is much more specific and related to the individual. But again, that's because of this is, you know, for you. And so you read this and you pull out, you know, what God speaks to you. Um, so I feel like I did pretty good. Let me know in the comments if you feel like, no, you messed that up and you took this whole thing about God and his, his kingdom and made it about a person and whatnot. Um, or if you think, you know, I did all right in part two, let me know, um, put your prayer requests in the comments as well. Until next time, you guys have a blessed day.